If you begin to lead others, you will be criticized. No one will be a significant spiritual leader if his aim is to please others and seek their approval. Amen. Paul said in Galatians 1.10, Am I seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I was still pleasing men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Spiritual leaders, do not seek the praises of men. Thank you, madam. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Spiritual leaders do not seek the praises of men. Amen. They seek to please God. Amen. If criticism destabilizes us, we will never make it as spiritual leaders. I don't mean that we must be the kind of people who don't feel hot, but rather that we must not be wiped out by the hot. We must be able to say with Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 8, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, yes. perplexed, but not driven to despair, yes. persecuted, but not forsaken, Hallelujah. struck down, but not destroyed. Yes. Hallelujah! We will feel. We will feel the criticism, yes. but we will not be incapacitated by it. Amen. As Apostle says, mm -hmm. as Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4.16, mm -hmm. we do not lose heart. Yes. Leaders must be able to digest depression Amen. because they will eat plenty of it. Amen. There will be many, many days Amen. where the temptation is very strong to quit because of unappreciated people. Criticism is one of Satan's favorite weapons yes, yes. to get effective Christian leaders to throw in the tower. Mm -hmm. I have thrown tower many, many times, but I quickly pick it up before my yeah. reverend notices. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. As you are ever qualify this character of being thick skin. I do not want to give the impression that spiritual leaders are closed off or should be insensitive or oblivious to legitimate criticism. Mm. A good leader must not only be thick-skinned, but also open and humbly ready to accept and apply just criticism. Yes. No leader is perfect. And my mentor, Professor, said once that he made it a spiritual discipline mm -hmm. to look for the truth in every criticism that came his way yeah. before he discarded it. Yeah. And that is good advice. Amen. Amen. The next one is energetic. <laughs> Lazy people cannot be leaders. <laughs> Spiritual leaders redeem the time. <laughs> Ephesians 5.16 They walk while it is day because they know that night comes when no man can walk. They do not grow weary in well doing. But they know that in due season they shall reap if they do not lose heart. Amen. Yes. They are steadfast, immovable, always abandoning in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord their labor is not in vain. Amen. Amen. Now, but they do not take credit for this great energy or boast in their efforts because they say with the Apostle Paul, I work harder than any of them. Though it was not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Yes. In First Corinthians 15 10. Yes. And for this I told, striving with the energy which he mightily inspires within me in Colossians 1 29. Now, a, a, a spiritual leader must be a hard thinker. Be babes in evil, but in thinking, be mature. Be babes in evil, but in thinking, be mature. First Corinthians 14 20. It is not easy to be a leader of the people who can outwit or outthink you. A leader must be one who, when he sees a set of circumstances, thinks about it, 
He sits down with a pad and pencil and doodles and writes and creates. He tests all things with his mind and holds fast to what is good. Yes. As we read in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, it is critical in the best sense of the word that is not gullible or faddish or trendy. He weighs things and considers the pros and cons and always has a significant yes. rationale yes. for the decisions that he makes. Careful and rigorous thought is not contrary, is not opposed to a reliance on prayer and divine revelation. The Apostle Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 7, Think over what I say, for the Lord will grant you understanding in everything. In other words, God's way of imparting to us insight is not to short circuit the intellectual process. Then the next one is articulate. It is hard to lead others if you cannot state your thoughts clearly and forcefully. Leaders like Paul aim to persuade men not to coerce them or intimidate them, as we read in 2 Corinthians 5 11. Leaders who are spiritual do not communicate his thought with hot air or waves but rather with crisp, solid, compelling sentences. The Apostle Paul aimed, like all good leaders, at clarity in what he said in Colossians 4.4. 4. He asked the people to pray for him that I might make it clear as I thought to speak. All spiritual leaders are constantly in need of prayers from their flock and God's people church is not an exemption. We need your prayers all the time. Amen. Number nine, able to teach. It is not surprising to me that some of the great leaders at Gospel Baptist Church Seminary from where I got my training have been men who are also significant teachers. According to 1 Timothy 3.2, anyone who aspires to the office of great leader in the church should be able to teach. The goal of a good teacher is the transformation of all of life and thought into a Christ-honoring unity. Amen. Amen. The next one is a good judge of character. Jesus knew the hearts of men, as we saw in John 2.17, and he ought us to be perceptive in assessing others. Leaders must know who is fit for what kind of work. Good leaders have good noses. And my reverend is not an exception to that because he always smells my garlic. And that's why she doesn't buy garlic in the house again. <laughs> they, can, they, can, they can snoop out garlic smell in a hurry. That these people who are forever listening but never learning or changing, they can detect potentialities when they see them in a the beginner. They can hear in a short time the echoes of pride and hypocrisy and worldliness. The spiritual leader steers a careful course between the dangers of rigid pigeonholing on the one hand and indifference on the other hand. Then tactful. Paul said in Colossians 4, 4, 5 and 6, Conduct yourself wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, Season with salt to know how it is necessary to answer each one. And the writer of Proverbs says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. We must remember that leaders are aiming to change hearts, not just to get jobs done. Therefore, alienating or frustrating people away unnecessarily is self defeating. That is that quality of grace that wins the confidence of people who are sure you will not do or say something erratic. You can't inspire a group of followers if people have to hang their heads in embarrassment at the inappropriate and insensitive things you say or do. That is especially needed in a leader to help cope with the embarrassing or tragic situations. Amen. Amen. Twelve, theologically oriented. Colossians 3.17 says, Do all in the name of that Lord Jesus. 
1 Corinthians 2.16 speaks of the spiritual man as having the mind of Christ. A spiritual leader knows that all of life, down to its smallest detail, has to do with God. If we are to lead people to see and reflect God's glory, we must think theologically about everything. We must work together towards a synthesis of all things. We must probe to see how things fit together. <coughs> Leaders must have a theological standpoint that helps give cohesions to all things. And this will give the leader a stability that keeps him from being knocked off his feet by sudden changes in circumstances or new winds of doctrine. He knows enough about God and his ways that things generally fit into a pattern and make sense even when they are unpleasant. So the leader does not throw up his hands but points the way onward to God. A dreamer. According to Joel 2.28, in the last days in which we now live, your old men shall dream dreams yes. and your young men shall see visions. Yes. This is the positive counterpart to restlessness. We must not only be discontent with the present, but also dreaming dreams of what could be in the future. Amen. In 2 Kings 6, 15-17, Elisha and his servant were surrounded by Assyrians in the city of Dothan. When the servant sees this and cries out with dismay, Elisha prays and says, O oh Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Hallelujah. If God be with us, who can be against us? Amen. For the battle is for the Lord. Amen. Leaders can see the power of God overshadowing the problems of the future. And this is a real gift to see the sovereign power of God in the midst of seemingly overwhelming opposition. 14. Organized and efficient. A leader does not like cluster. He likes to know where and when things are for quick access and use. His favorite shape is the straight line, not the curves or the circle. He grows in meeting that do not move from premises to conclusion, but rather go in irrelevant circles. When something must be done, he sees a three-step plan for getting it done and lays it out. A leader sees the links between a board decision and its implementation. He sees ways to use time to the full and shape his own schedule to maximize his usefulness. He saves himself large blocks of time for his major productive activities. He uses little pieces of time, lest they go to waste. Decisive. In 1 Kings 18.21, Elijah cries out, How long? Will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. A leader cannot be paralyzed by indecisiveness. Take risk rather than do nothing. He will soak himself in prayer and in the word and then rest himself in God's sovereignty as he makes a decision knowing that he will very likely make some mistakes. A leader who is afraid to step beyond no terrain or reluctant to trust others' positive ideas ends up enjoying what we call peaceful stagnation. We are not going forward, we are not going backward, but we are peaceful. We don't like that. The next one is perseverance. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 30, he who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. Paul said in Galatians 6 9, Let us not grow weary in well doing. We live in a day when immediate gratification is usually demanded. That means that very few people excel in the virtue of perseverance. Very few people 
keep on and keep on in the same ministry where there is significant difficulty, visions without perseverance, however, results in fairy tales, not fruitful ministry. My dad once told me that the reason he thinks many pastors fail to see revival in their churches is that they live just before it is about to happen. The long haul is hard, but it pays. The victory is felt by many, many little jobs. The criticism that come your way will be long forgotten if you keep on doing the lost will. Hello. Amen. A lover. One of the greatest temptations of a busy leader is to begin to treat his or her spouse as a kind of strength partner in their matrimonial homes in the name of Christianity. <laughs> when Apostle Paul was confronted by believers regarding what the Lord says concerning matrimonial duties of spouses to each other, his response in Ephesians 5:21-25 is a more familiar passage. Paul this time shows marriage as an application of a spiritual truth. In this passage, the apostle exhorts husbands to love their wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. In Ephesians 5.25, the spiritual truth is that Christ loved the church 